Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles, and today I'm going to go over a bit of noise and some UI stuff. So, I had a lot of trouble figuring out what the Fast Noise Light class does. So I built this kind of UI thing so that I can just kind of open it up and play with the settings. So I, I uh, inspiration for this came from looking through the documentation. I mean, I can read stuff and kind of like look it up and figure it out, but I thought it'd be more interesting to see it visually. So first things first, how do we look at the noise? And in the methods is get image. So what we can actually do is take a 2D noise map and turn it into an image. And then in order to display that image, we need to turn that into a texture and then we can throw it onto a uh, texture rectangle. Um, and so that's one of the controls is a texture rectangle. So there we go. Look at that. It's very messy as it should be and if we lower the frequency it gets less and less messy but you can see interesting details and so the dark spots are going to correspond to um, I think the noise puts out ranges from like negative one to one so like dark is going to be negative one and then light would be one so I set up a new class and I need a canvas layer to display my control nodes and then I need some control nodes. And I could have probably used a uh, like basic control node to control the theme, but I never messed with the theme, so it didn't matter. Aha. And I think what I'll do is I'll just have a V-box that splits up the image and then the UI elements. And I can use that stretch image slider to force the image to be bigger. Okay, so then what do I want on the right side? So I probably want a V-Box because I'll have a lot of different items um, distributed vertically across that thin strip panel. Something neat I found was if you go to the theme and you use this little picker thing, you can actually see what some of these sample UI elements are. So like that's an each slider and then there's a V-Box there and there so I didn't know how to do a drop down, and I think that's how I kind of figured it out. I ended up making one slider, but it just kind of ended up being easier to do uh, text enter boxes for a lot of the values. Because as a slider, um, some of these values, the range was too crazy. Like I think a slider is pretty suitable for maybe like a percentage, but it doesn't make sense like consider the seed right that could be almost any integer i think and it'll figure it out um so a slider doesn't really make sense for that but so what i'm doing here is i'm gonna make a couple sample ui chunks like the drop down text right i need a label and then the drop down and then for the slider one we need the slider the value and then the slider itself i'm sorry the label and the the, the slider would go below it and a check label and the button's just a button, you know? Uh, eventually I did add some buttons for some of these because sometimes you want a like default value. One thing I couldn't figure out is how to tell how big the texture was because what I wanted to do was to extract from the node itself how big the, the image was and then use that when I generate it to get like the perfect sized image. But I didn't figure it out, so too bad, so sad. My size didn't work, and whatever that guy did didn't work. But that's okay. See, zero zero is not a very big size, and I know I know it was bigger than that. And so this isn't really meant to be a tutorial. This is just going to be rambling about stuff. So if that's not what you're interested in, skip to where you want. Oh, okay, so you know, it's always important to name functions something that makes sense. So I'm gonna have do the thing, populate the image texture with the image. And that's something that's gonna need to happen a lot. So uh, do the thing, very memorable. In fact, we'll just do it right at the beginning, right when the, right when the scene's ready. And there we go, it, it, it's, uh, it's something, it's a start, you know what I'm saying? It's good to test this every now and then if you're ever building something like this. 
Because sometimes you make too much and then you don't know what we're on. But I'm going to be using some of what I do here for the next video. The next video I'm going to be doing some proc gen for the uh, Terraria like game. Because I, I don't know, I really like I really liked making that, and I wanted to keep going with it. I'm, I'm going to go back to the roguelike. I just don't know when. So as you can see, I have two scroll containers. The first one has all the samples, and the second one is going to be like the final product. So what I can do is I can just highlight one of those samples, Control C, click on the other scroll container and then hit control V and it'll populate a copy of that sample at the bottom of it. And then I can fill it in with the information that I need. I also need to take all these different buttons and stuff and connect their signals, depending on what it is, into the script and then have the script do the thing and change values and stuff. One of the questions I kind of had was how does type classing deal with like text and stuff because a lot of the time I have these text boxes and you could type whatever you want in there and I know there was something that would like limit what you can type in there but instead of doing that I just did the lazy way where you, uh, you fix it on the back end. Now one thing I don't really like about the documentation is it doesn't give you ranges for what the values should be so it would be really cool you know, sometimes it does. It'll it'll tell you, okay, the noise is going to be become between negative one and one, and it's a float. And it, it always has the types, so that's really great. But if it could tell me, like, you know, how, you know, how small can it make the frequency before it just doesn't matter, or um, you know, what what should the seed be? Because it there can't be like millions of seeds. That would be ridiculous. Oh yeah, so the drop down. I found was really helpful for anything that was like an enumeration. That made a lot of sense. So you, you um, for cellular um, noise, you have these this drop down for the return type, or just even for the noise type, right? Because uh, you you only have like five or six things, and the drop down is really nice because it it gives you text instead of just the value instead of like zero, one, two, three, four. Like that doesn't really mean anything. Um, but for the drop down, you can just enter the number of little drop a or whatever, and it'll automatically spit that out as an integer. And so that if you name it right, then it corresponds directly with the uh, the enumeration. Is it enumer enum? I know it's enumeration, but do people call it enums or enumerations? Who knows? So now that some thing is showing on the screen I can start talking about what these values do. It's like cellular jitter is going to change the shape of the cells for cellular um, noise. And what cellular noise is, it's like a grid that's been warped and then the values inside the grid are, are what's randomized. And that's what the return type, that's why the return type matters. So if you have it on value, it's just gonna give you those different random values. Or you can do like distance from the center. So distance from the center would give you like darker in the middle and wider around the edges of those different cells. And one of the things that's nice about cellular noise is it's good for distributing chunks so if you imagine a big map maybe you want some like chunks of stuff like maybe enemies or items or trees or something because you know it's not gonna make sense for all of those things to be uniformly distributed so we can set it up to where we put stuff based on the value of that noise map and cellular noise is gonna automatically have a bit of clustering to it. Whereas like simplex or Perlin noise, it's gonna look more kind of like smoke. So maybe we don't want orcs to 
pervasively wisp around the landscape. We want them to kind of cluster into clans or something. So that was kind of the inspiration for this, was to, to visualize what different kinds of noise look like so that when I want to use noise, but I don't know what type, I can just kind of play around the settings till I, I see something that kind of works. So the list of things you can change grows, but I've set it up to where, uh, based on some of the drop downs, you don't always need these, like domain warp stuff, you don't need if that checkbox isn't ticked, or uh, same for fractal, if, if fractal's none, Oh, so what's Fractal? Fractal's like you did noise inside of a unit of noise. Uh, if you've ever seen like Stropinski's triangle, that kind of idea, you, you draw a triangle and then inside of that triangle you can put four triangles and then inside of each of those triangles you put four triangles. So with Fractal Noise, you have different layers of noise with varying frequencies. So like with Stropinski's triangle, you have the big triangle and then you have the set of you know, medium triangles, and you have a set of smaller triangles, and so on and so forth. So it just adds another layer of randomness or smoothness. Says, oh, right, right, right. Why even use fast noise light? Because it's smooth. Suppose you want randomness, but you want that randomness not to be too freaking erratic, you know? So then you can use like Perlin or Simplex, because the neighboring values won't be too far from their neighbors. Right, you know, I, I said that weird, but you should understand some of it, maybe. Um, cellular, though, there are going to be defining lines between the noise elements. So you can see them. You can see them on the boundary. So here kind of shows off what the domain warp does. It takes those boundaries and squiggles them up. Look at them. They're crazy and sometimes they even break off a little bit. And there's all these different, you know, settings. I mean, there aren't all of them, but there are there are settings here. Like you can make the domain warp have fractal, and I don't know what the, the lack of thing, oh, lack of narity. I actually don't know what it means, but I remember the word, so that's helpful. Uh, in general, a higher frequency is going to give you a messier map than a lower frequency. And so like 0 0.01 is kind of small, but you know, for this image, it makes it so I can actually look at it. Oh, that looks kind of neat. It's like junk. Oh, there we go. That's absolute junk. It's just like I spilled oil on top of another oil recently. So I'm gonna go on a tangent because I don't really know what to talk about here. Uh, recently, I was changing the, the oil in my car and long story short, instead of letting out the oil, I let out the, the transmission oil, the CVT oil, and my Macon model needs some special janky oil that only the dealership can do for a billion dollars. You need a billion dollars for them to put in $50 of oil and back into the CVT. So then, you know, I went on the old uh, YouTube chains and was watching people do it and it was super complicated. And then uh, I ran across this like discussion chain that said, well, I dropped it out, made the same mistake I did because uh, they hide the freaking oil plug on my car. And, you know, he went too far back and he dropped the wrong plug. And then someone's like, why don't you just put it back in? And so that's what I ended up doing. I just took the, the old oil and I put it back in because it was in a clean pan and uh, my car didn't break. So that was pretty cool. Well, one of the neat things I was doing was the color picker. So black and white's kind of boring, but, you know, it'd be really cool to do a gradient. And I don't think I picked it up on camera, but... Uh, but what it's going to do is there's two colors and it's going to interpolate the noise value between those two colors. So you can have kind of sort of like a gradient. And I'm sure there was a better way to do it with like shaders and stuff, but I don't know anything about shaders. So, you know, that's another day. I also had to clean up some of the other elements that should have been hiding, like cellular, cellular stuff. I didn't need visible all the time. So we're going to make those hide and probably gotta hide those too. All right, cool, they're gone. 
And then when I select cellular, they show up perfect. Simplex is all squirrely. There's cellular and good. Uh, but anyways, so I have that change color in there and that's that was one of the places I need the button. Oh, I haven't done the seed button yet. Well, that's coming, it's coming. So you can pick a color and when you close the pop-up, it'll redo the noise with that color. So like the one on the left is the for negative or value. The one on the right is for positive values. And that looks just terrible. I can't even tell what I'm looking at. It didn't actually help me understand the noise better, but you know, it was something. I hope this doesn't like hurt anyone's eyes because it's hurt my eyes pretty good. But anyways, for it's, for it's for a good cause. I'm making pretty good progress on doing a little bit of proc gen for the, for uh, that last video I did. Um, so us usually how this works is one week I'll make and record in Godot. And then the next week I'll procrastinate a bunch and not edit, not edit the content. And then finally poop out a video and this is what you get. Uh, here we go, the random seed button. So I have no idea what the range for seed is. So I just did from zero to uh, 10,000 or whatever. Well, maybe that's 100,000. And let's see, oh, okay, that works pretty good. Gosh, that's blurry. I should have changed that to something that wasn't so blurry. But yeah, so I'm gonna put this up on my itch, unless everyone tells me not to, which I mean, no, no one talks to me anyway, so it doesn't matter. You know what, even then, I'll, I'm gonna put it on my itch. So you can go play around with this junk. I mean, one remiss is this color box is too busy. I, I should have figured out a way to do it um, myself or something, I don't know. And I know I didn't go into too much detail, but I wouldn't mind making a video about UI things. Though I'm just not great at them. I know some though, like I know how to do a little bit of UI stuff, just not anything usable in like an actual game. So this is a funny bug. It's like over, it's gone too far on, uh, there it kind of fixed itself, but it, uh, it, it was all yellow for some reason. So yeah, you can play with the colors. I don't think the alpha channel does anything because I have them set as RGB eights or something. And you can play with the noise things, the, uh, the settings. But you know what I should do before I upload it is maybe like copy and paste the documentation into the tool tips. So when you mouse over, it tells you what they do. But, um, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So yeah, that's about all I have to say about this project. Uh, keep an eye out on my Twitch. I'm not sure if I'm going to upload this video before this. I can't say for sure. And then for next week's video, I'm stuck between deciding to make it kind of like a two or three parter or work on it a bit longer before I uh, start editing it. We can have stuff, but I'm not sure if I'm at a good stopping point or not, if you know what I mean. And that's about it. Y'all have a good one.